Donald Trump now demanding that the affidavit be unsealed. And previously, we've talked about the warrant that was involved in the raid by the FBI in his personal residence at Mar-a-Lago. But we only got to see the inventory and the cover sheet of the warrant. And now we're asking ourselves, what was the justification for that warrant? Why did they think that they had the privilege, the ability, the legal cover, the justification to go in there into Trump's residence and just go start seizing boxes. Well, they had to write something to convince a judge to give him permission to do that. It's called the affidavit. And we had talked here on this channel previously about Merrick Garland and him being somebody who was okay communicating about this case when he came out during his press conference and he gave us a big litany about, you know, justice, this and ethics and whatever. Not Didn't really learn a whole lot from him, but he did come out and communicate it. So we were all surprised when yesterday the court filed or the prosecutors filed this with the court. Here's what they said. They said, judge, the affidavit in this case presents very different sets of circumstances and considerations than the cover sheet and the inventory list. They say there remain compelling reasons, including to protect the integrity of an ongoing law enforcement investigation that implicates national security that supports keeping the affidavit sealed. Right, that's Merrick Garland. That's the new posture on this thing. National security, criminal investigation, ongoing. This is going to jeopardize all of that if we are now unsealing the, the affidavit, the entirety of the warrant. And so after that got submitted on our program yesterday, we wanted to see what Donald Trump was going to say and how his defense team would respond to this. And right after the program, 17 hours ago from when I took this screenshot, Donald Trump was on True Social, and this is what he said. He said, there is no way to justify the unannounced raid of Mar-a-Lago, and raid is all capitalized, right? And there's a lot of synonyms in the English language that we're going to be able to use as this entire saga continues. The unannounced raid of Mar-a-Lago, the home of the 45th president of the United States, he says, who by far got, you know, certain, uh, you know, outcomes better than other presidents. He says, by a very large number of gun-toting FBI agents, they all came into my residence, and the Department of, quote, justice. But in the interest of transparency, which is a word we use a lot here, I call for the immediate release of the completely unredacted affidavit pertaining to this horrible and shocking break-in. Also, the judge on the case should recuse. And that was posted on True Social by Donald Trump, at Real Donald Trump. 45th president of the United States of America, calling the FBI's uh, execution of the search warrant, right? That's what they say. That's an execution of a search warrant. Cops do this all the time. It's called emotive conjugation. They say a suspect fled the scene, whereas a defense attorney might say, what are you talking about? They returned home, right? They went home. They didn't flee the scene. They went home. Here they're saying that they executed a search warrant. Trump says, no, they invaded my personal residence. There was a raid and a break-in. And also the judge should recuse himself. So we're going to get a lot of this, right? Donald Trump is very good at this. And he's, he's sort of uh, practiced, basically won him the last election. So uh, the first election. So that's his response. And now what has the judge done? And so let's take a quick look at this entry. The rest of the court docket is not all that interesting. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, let's, actually, let's go over to the docket and just take a quick look at it. We've got plenty of time. This is over from the United States versus sealed search warrant, and it is the case that is uh, pertaining to Donald Trump and the invasion of Mar-a-Lago. And look, we've got several things that were entered here uh, from August 15th. Yesterday, we left off reading this response, right? The most recent cases are on top. So we had a response by the United States, and this is where they were opposing the unsealing of the warrant. They did not want that to be unsealed. So we already read through that 13 pages, and I gave you the highlight. National security, they don't want Trump to know how this investigation is going. They're saying that this would give him a template or a framework, I guess, for other presidents who might be prosecuted in the future. So they said, we can't allow this to happen. So then we got several additional entries. We had a notice of appearance from other people, and I haven't seen this yet, so this is not publicly available yet. I haven't seen that. Then we've got several orders, orders on motion for miscellaneous relief, and don't see that one either. But then this was the one that really hit today, and it kind of, uh, you know, was, was in interesting because we actually have a hearing scheduled now on the 18th. So that is going to be Thursday. We've got 
an in-person hearing that's going to be held to really settle this issue about whether there should be unsealed. Order on the motion to unseal the document. Judge is saying, everybody come crashing in here on Thursday. And look at this. No remote or telephonic appearances are going to be permitted. If any movement or intervener wants to file a reply to the government's response, they may do so by 9 a.m. that morning. Okay, so the government responded and they said, do not unseal the warrant. No matter what you do, do not unseal the warrant. But look, there's all of these other people who really, really want it unsealed, like really badly. We talked about many of these. And in fact, one of them has filed an appeal. Okay, so this guy, Paul M. Dorsey, he filed a motion to intervene. We've got this motion to unseal. We've got that managing editor of Albany Times, a new one yesterday. ABC, motion to intervene. Another motion to intervene. Dow Jones Company, okay? Everybody wants to be involved in this case. Why wouldn't they? It's Trump. So all of that is happening. And we already know, yesterday we read, the judge denied one of those motions to intervene. Like a bunch of people came in here and the judge said, not everybody needs to intervene and be involved in this case. Your interests are served by the media and the media is enough. We, we gave a couple people access to this case, but we don't need to give everybody additional access. And here it is, right? Denying 52, 53, and 54, these pro se motions. These are all people, and I didn't look into any of them. I don't know if they're journalists or just private citizens or what. But the judge said, you know, you don't get access to intervene. The interests asserted by the movements are adequately represented by the media. Now, Today, right, and yesterday there was a great question. Somebody, one of you asked this on either watching the watchers.locals.com or either on a super chat here. But it was a very interesting question. Since the judge denied this motion, can they appeal that? Right? What happens if the judge, like if you're in the middle of a case, people know about appeals sort of at the end of the case. But what happens in the middle? Like what happens if this guy says, Well, I want access to those documents? The judge denied it and he says, Well, uh, how about no, I think I should have access to that. Can he appeal that order? And the answer is yes, right? So now we have an appeal off of just one order. And so let me show you that. So you can see these cases can really just sort of get out of control. Look, there it is. Uh, we've got here a transmission of a notice to appeal. So this guy, Paul M. Dorsey, he filed a motion. He wanted access to the warrant. And the judge denied it. So what did he do? He filed a notice of appeal. And the court transmitted it over to the U.S. Court of Appeals. So it's all going over there, right? They're gonna, now, now the Court of Appeals is going to have them battle that out. And then it'll come back over here. But by the time it comes back into this docket, it, you know, this case may be over. It may uh, still may, 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 may be moot at that point in time, right? It may have already been unsealed. So Paul Dorsey is really, you know, sort of going after that. He wants to see it. Transmission of the notice of appeal, a letter from somebody named Michael Barth, and then an order on the motion to unseal the document. And again, all this stuff, a lot of this is paperless, so there's no actual real order to see. But the takeaway from this docket update is that the judge is going to be scheduling a hearing on the 18th. So that's going to be Thursday. It's going to be 9 a.m. Eastern time. So that will be uh, 6 a.m. here on the West Coast. And... Uh, it sounds like right, no telephonic, no remote appearances allowed. So, you know, I don't know what the media, right? There's probably going to be a media room and it's probably going to be overflowing with people. So I'd imagine there's going to be Twitter threads and we'll have to uh, jip from those to see what is happening there and then wait for all of the official reports. But that is the update from Donald Trump, the search warrant, the docket update, the Mar-a-Lago raid. And we have one more little bit to attend to here because as we're asking ourselves, why was this raid conducted now? A big part of the question or a lot of people's questions are, well, you know, it seems like it's sort of in close proximity to the election, hmm, you know, to the midterms, which, of course, uh, is true because those are just a couple months away. But we also heard that there was a lot of urgency in this saga that uh, Merrick Garland and the DOJ and all the people involved in this investigation had no choice but to go and raid Trump's residence because of national security implications, because this involved nuclear materials or whatever. And all of that was being leaked out by the DOJ to many people around the media, right? There were, there were, you know, Merrick Garland would come out and he'd give a stupid little press conference for four minutes, take zero questions before he, uh, you know, hightailed it out of there and then leaks a bunch of stuff to the media. He doesn't say anything about nuclear codes or nuclear anything. Where did that come from? The DOJ. They know what it is. And so they just selectively leak stuff that serves their narrative. 
And so if this really is a national security crisis, if there really is urgency, if Donald Trump really was negligent in keeping this stuff in boxes in Melania's closet somewhere, why did it take them two years after they took over power to go and wrap this up? Right. They sent a subpoena. Why didn't they try to enforce the subpoena? Why did they go raid the residents? If it was so dangerous, right, why was there not urgency? Or I thought there was urgency, right? That's kind of what they told us. But now maybe there wasn't actually that much urgency at all because Merrick Garland apparently weighed on this thing for weeks. Look at this. The search raid, it took weeks for him to analyze. Attorney General took his signature deliberative approach. Uh, which just means you're slow. You see how they did that? Signature deliberative approach. It means slow to move. Justice Department asks, asks the judge not to unseal the affidavit. Oh, gosh. I think, I think I'm a member here. Let me just sign in on this thing. I thought I had done this already. I forgot. I am on uh, a different browser over here. So we're going to log in and read the article here in a quick second. There it is. We're back. All right. So it says, now... Attorney General Merrick Garland deliberated for weeks over whether to approve the application for a warrant. For weeks. For weeks. So if this was so catastrophic, what was he waiting on? This comes from people familiar with the matter. They say this is a sign of his cautious approach and that it's going to be tested over the coming months. Now, there was a great article by Julie Kelly over at American Greatness Today, and she says uh, in that article that maybe Merrick Garland's not the real person in charge here. Maybe it's Lisa Monaco. And that's something that I've really suggested here at length. I don't know that he's the one who is going to be tested over the coming months. I think this whole thing has been mostly gamed out at this point. And it's other people who are executing it. Merrick Garland's just that sort of, you know, he's the, the nice front boy. The decision has been the subject of weeks of meetings between senior Justice Department and FBI officials, the people said. The warrant allowed a- agents on Monday, last Monday, to seize classified information and other materials, Garland now faces a more momentous decision that will further sharpen an already unprecedented and politically fraught situation. Whether to pursue charges against Mr. Trump or any of his allies over their handling of the records at issue and their interactions with the Justice Department officials seeking to retain them and retrieve them. Right. So this might be what they're, where they're going for, sort of obstruction, right, an obstruction charge because he is not giving them the documents back or they demanded the documents back via subpoena. He didn't do that. He's obstructing the you know, formal operations of government. A decision to bring the charges in the matter against Mr. Trump or his allies would thrust the Justice Department deeper into political environment in which the former president and Republican lawmakers are already accusing them of overreach. Department on Monday asked the judge not to release the search warrant, saying that it's critically important about our investigation. And if disclosed, it's going to cause all sorts of problems. Workers recently, apparently, this is what the FBI building looks like. So they've got some medical uh, uh, metal barricades around. Uh, I guess that's their security fencing, I guess. New security fencing went up around the FBI. Wow. So that, I mean, this fencing here looks pretty good. There's some barbed wire on top of that. This looks like you might be able to just fall over it. You know, if you just kind of run into it fast, you'll, you don't even have to jump. You'll probably just fall over the other side, you know. But uh, that's the FBI for you. So uh, Republicans and other people at the House are. Yeah, here it is. Justice Department officials have defended the Mar-a-Lago search. People familiar with their approach have said the primary goal was to ensure security of highly sensitive national security documents after Trump didn't relinquish them. The decision whether to pursue the criminal charges promises to be a defining one for Merrick Garland, former prosecutor. Staffers since the late 1970s at the Justice Department. He's a lifer. Uh, He helped codify changes intended to restore trust in the institution. Well, that's not working out so well for him. Very interesting. You know, the guy who's sort of been a lifetime uh, purveyor of the Justice Department might be the single guy responsible for destroying it. And I like I'm not saying that uh, lightheartedly. You know, if they indict Trump, I mean, half the country is not going to think the DOJ is credible at all. And with good reason because they're prosecuting their political enemies. So that is the update on the docket. Now we've got a lot of response from Republicans and we're going to continue to follow this. And I hope you subscribe and join us as we do.